Ken. Thanks, General Formica. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for the opportunity to come and talk to you today. And uh, I tell you, I've known General Formica for a long time. He's changed the ground rules on me a little bit. Uh, and he told me as the titanium sponsor, North of Grumman would have all 90 minutes just to <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'll try to cut my remarks a little shorter, keep it to five to seven. But uh, it is an honor to be here today. And it's an interesting perspective for me, you know, a couple years ago, as the case with several of us on the panel, uh, I was uh, on the opposite side of this equation and on the government side. And, uh, you know, you always think you know uh, everything you need to know about the, the people you're doing business with. And um, uh, it's, just, it's just interesting to, to know now that I've been on the industry side for uh, almost three years now, how, how sort of different it is and how little I did know back in the day when I thought I knew quite a bit. And there's certainly a lot more to learn for me. But uh, I'm enjoying my time at uh, North Grumman uh, very, very much. It's a great company I want to talk a little bit more about philosophical approach and how we're sort of thinking about the missile defense problem. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, let you know how excited we are to bring a new part of our company together. As I think all of you know, we recently merged with Orbital ATK, and that's now Northrop Grumman Innovation Systems, and certainly shaping, I think, how we're thinking about the future of missile defense. I think they bring a number of things to the table to uh, what was already a great company, uh, bringing uh, innovation systems into the fold now, bringing expertise and small space systems into launch systems and propulsion and the missiles and munitions. So uh, really, really exciting times for us and sort of shaping the way we're thinking about maintaining our industrial edge. Let me start where I always started as a warfighter and I continue to start to today because as General Formica said, we're really thinking about this problem from a threat-based uh, problem. And I didn't put the slide in here to make you all dizzy, but to make the point, I think you're all well-versed in this slide, that this is something that we've all been aware of for quite some time that that threat continues to grow in a number of ways, in quantity and quality, but particularly in its diversity. So we can't just think about the problem in a, in a simple way anymore. It's, it's really becoming more and more complex all the time. And I think we have to think about, as industry partners, how we then uh, give the warfighters, give our customers the best possible tools to deal with that. Because that's a daunting challenge. I think you all agree. I think you would also agree that many of the systems we put out there for the warfighter today are really designed for one threat in particular. And so we need to be thinking about more in terms of a multifunction approach, more in terms of a digital approach, more in terms of an approach that allows us to grow and adapt to the future. And if you take that and you sort of juxtapose it with the military industrial complex that we have set up to deal with that, I like to describe it in terms of five gears. And these gears arguably were set up many, many years ago uh, frankly worked for a long time and uh, I don't think we're going to change this and I'm not suggesting that we do but I think that the military industrial complex is becoming less and less responsive to the needs of the customer and so our job in industry is to figure out how do we sort of make changes to that so we can maybe speed up those gears a little bit so let me just describe my perspective on each of them I start of course always with the warfighter with the men and women in uniform who are out there defending our nation and our interests around the world they are, they should be, and they should always be maintained as primacy in terms of what they need to fight the fights that they are fighting and hopefully never have to fight in many cases. The warfighter always has to be first, but you take their needs from a statement of need and you go sort of to the next step to the requirements process. And that requirements process is sometimes cumbersome. I would argue that as industry, we need to figure out better ways to plug into that process, to be more uh, sort of communication needs to improve uh, oftentimes with our government customers, that would be helpful. It's a two-way street to be sure. We need to make sure that we're having the appropriate dialogue to understand it. And then you go to something that I'll just call the functional establishment, and that includes a whole lot of things, uh, from the Pentagon, to the Department of Defense, to the Congress themselves, to the political constituencies, to things like the CAPE and the Comptroller, to people who are doing really, really good work in the functional establishment, like our contracts professionals and our business management professionals. They all have jobs to do and they all have interests to be maintained and to see sort of carried through. But I would argue that we start to get further and further away with each one of those interests sort of making their inputs into this complex, further and further away from the needs of those warfighters. And we need to always remember that it goes back to them. And then you have us in industry. You know, how do we fit into that process, taking all of that's been shaped thus far from the warfighter to the requirements process, to those functional establishment, all those interests that come into play. It's our job now to take those, those needs and those requirements and to shape them into something that we can give back ultimately to the warfighter and have it be useful to them. Uh, we could do, certainly uh, improve the jobs that we do to be more responsive. 
we can communicate better, we can have better collaboration, uh, but we also need sort of a, a cooperation from our government uh, partners and our partners uh, in, in, in our customer base to, to make sure that we, we have those conversations in the right way. And then finally, the fifth gear, and we could argue in the Q&A, you can suggest there could be more gears to this. There probably are. But when I think of it, the sort of the last step before we get all the way back now to that warfighter is, you know, the testers and the deployment people, how to get those capabilities to the warfighter in a timely fashion. And I'll tell you, I think we need to do better, and I think industry has a role in that. There's really no common thread between all those gears, or if there are common, thread, excuse me, common threads, they often are frayed, and they're sort of long lead times between them. It took, I read an article uh, just two weeks ago that cited a source that said uh, from a statement of need to an actual capability delivering to the warfighter takes in the average of 16 to 17 years. That's frankly not responsive enough given that first slide about the threat and how quickly the pace of the change of the threat continues to happen. So we have to change this. And what are some ways we can perhaps do that? We can think about this in my mind in three different ways. Better communication, better collaboration, and better speed. And at Northrop Grumman, we're thinking about maintaining our industrial edge in a number of ways, thinking about certainly the use of things like agile DevOps, which I know a lot of you, probably all of you are familiar with, for particularly software development, developing and delivering capabilities sooner to the warfighter. We've got great examples of this where we're doing this with some of our customers in the intelligence community, for the United States Strategic Command, for others, and it's actually working very, very well. We can deliver changes to systems and functionalities to systems for the future that will allow us to adapt to that changing threat all the time. We're trying to apply this to the work of missile defense. As you know, we're a, a partner with our teammates uh, on the ground-based mid-course defense system, a very large player there. We're trying to put agile DevOps into our software development for the future so we don't have to have these sort of long lead time builds from capability improvements in GMD to the next. We can do this in an agile and a DevOps way and we can speed that process to the warfighter and get them what they need sooner. That's one way I think industry can certainly help. We can also apply this to things like rapid prototyping, to iterative spiral development, and ultimately, again, thinking about lowering cost and increasing speed of delivery to the warfighter. So the one way that we're really thinking about this, and I would sort of couch it, uh, is this, this idea of digital transformation. We think that digital is the wave of the future, and, and there's a lot of systems out there that use digital, but I would argue we don't use it to the extent that we need to. We need to come up with systems that are extensible, that grow to the future, that are adaptable, and that can change. Because again, we can't spend 16, 17 years to deliver that new capability to the warfighter. We've got to find ways to inject capability sooner and be more responsive. We're seeing this a lot in the commercial space. There's a number of examples, commercial companies we can talk about that do this. Uh, I won't belabor you those details now. I'm sure you knew a lot of them are. But the bottom line is we've got to think differently. We've got to act differently about how we deliver those capabilities to the warfighter. We think digital is one of the ways to do it. Again, speed and affordability, I think, are enhanced. We're also thinking about ways to incorporate AI, systems that take large amounts of data, machine learning, uh, uh, systems that are, are, can learn as they collect that data and actually change the functionality. Uh, that's being done in a lot of areas across, uh, across industry and non-defense sectors. We think we can apply it to missile defense as well. In the world of sensors, we think that has a lot of exciting things. Sensors for missile defense could now be multi-band, as opposed to you choose an X-band or an X-band or whatever the case may be. Digital allows you to now have a wide berth or swath of uh, sensing capability that allows the warfighter to select and choose. Again, adaptable to that growing and changing threat. You also have the capability to uh, fix and repair systems while they're actually still hot. So in other words, still operational for the warfighter. You don't have to take them down, but through digital and digital technologies, there's an opportunity to do that, all in the interest of maintaining our industrial edge and supporting the warfighter. So I'll close with, I think, one example where I think this is uh, you really have a lot of merit. We've been talking about this area, this mission area, a lot already in the last couple of days. We'll continue to talk about it, and that is in the area of the defense against hypersonics. Uh, you know, we, we are, we as a company are major players in the missile defense today, in, in, excuse me, in the missile defense space today. I dare say that we are posturing ourselves to be a, a much more major and dominant player for the future of missile defense through this particular mission area, particularly as we brought on uh, innovation systems, orbitally orbital ATK, and taking that and all the goodness that was resident in our company and all of our competencies in cyber and command and control and modular open architecture kinds of systems putting them all together and sort of looking at this in a holistic way across the kill chain from 
prior to left of launch to launch to assessing what the uh, the threat may be to intercept to post intercept assessment et cetera et cetera in a holistic way. So as we seek to maintain our industrial edge at Northrop Grumman, we're leveraging all the goodness of the new Northrop Grumman, fully taking advantage of digital transformation, of modeling and simulation, of 3D printing, and a lot of other areas we can talk to in the Q&A. And I'd like to say, and I'm really proud of our company, sort of our mantra about solving our nation's toughest problems. You look at the work that we do in other than missile uh, defense areas, like the B-21, like the long-range strike, like 60-plus years of technical leadership in the ICBM world, uh, and sort of thinking about the future of deterrence for our nation. We as a company, I think, are well postured to bring all of that uh, into the future of missile defense. And I'd like to say, we do the hard stuff. So it's an honor to be uh, working at Northrop Grumman in really exciting times for us as we think about the future of missile defense and how to maintain that industrial edge. So thank you very much.